Look up the word buzz and you'll see a few definitions, including an atmosphere of excitement and activity. Quote, there is a real buzz about the place, end quote, which is why it's the perfect name for a new ETF that had the third best debut in history last week. The Van Eck Social Sentiment ETF backed by Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy, who joins us now. Dave, first I want to say congratulations, my man. Uh, I read where the fund has 75 stocks. I looked at them all. Uh, and I know there's a certain criteria that, for the moment, is blocking GameStop and AMC. So I'm going to ask you for the audience, what's up with that? When do they get put in? So the algorithm rejiggers itself every month. Um, and so if they, they, I know GameStop, for example, wasn't a $5 billion market cap. It obviously is now. So it, it really, one of the, when people see that I support, was behind buzz and whatnot, they think it's going to be a lot of the meme stocks, but the, it's an ETF. So it is based on more longer term holdings and, you know, the volatility that we may see. So stock has to prove itself before it gets into it. Um, I wish it was in there right now. I wish it was in there today because those stocks are ripping, <laughs> but I have nothing to do with the algorithm. It, um, and it is right. different than what, you know, traditionally, like, a lot of people associate me with Penn, which, you know, I'm intimately involved in marketing and things like that. But this is a group of stocks, so it, it, it's just the aggregate. It's an ETF, you know, obviously. Right. So, no, listen, I looked at the ETF. I looked at every, every name in there. And I got to be honest with you, it's an impressive mix from my point of view. I think people will be surprised. Ford is the number one holding, right? So, for me, this dismisses the notion that the Reddit crowd is only looking at penny stocks of unknown companies. I mean, because this is measuring social media, and people have said Ford. They like Ford. They're getting into EVs. They've redefined themselves. They're going to ride the wave. This, this, to me, points to a much more intelligent individual investor than you ever hear about in financial media. And that's that you nailed it. You nailed it. So there, there is this uh, disdain for like the internet or people who haven't grown up on Wall Street and aren't these huge firms. The internet is not just talking about GameStop and AMC and cost. There's people talking about all stocks. There's people using information coming out of blue chip companies all the way down to new companies and not companies that you expect to be successful and have a good stock price for a month, but for years. So that is a misconception. I don't know why everybody dismisses it. That was why I believed in this. I believe it's basically, right. you know, an aggregate of information. And what has more information than the internet? Really nobody. And there's tons of smart people out there. So it's not just measuring, you know, Wall Street bets and things like that. It's looking at articles. It's looking at everything you can name, stock twits, everything to just try to come up with what do people like. And again, these aren't flat. You just said it. Ford, DraftKings, there's all sorts of different companies. It's a mix. This is more a long-term investment. I wouldn't recommend anybody buying this ETF if they think they're going to make, you know, 100% a week. That's all it's for. It's a new age, right. longer-term investment that has proven with the algorithm to be far more successful than the S&P. So that's why I got behind it. And, and, and I got to tell you, you know, you, you already alluded to GameStop is having an amazing session again today. And Dave, listen, I've been doing this for a long time. One thing that pisses me off is this, this sort of notion that a company is buried when the stock gets hammered. You know, last week, Michael Storrs was taken private at $22.50. A year ago, it was a buck fifty. Nobody on Wall Street would touch it. 2009, Brunswick. You remember Brunswick, the bowling company? A $3.70 sure. stock. It has gone through the moon because they reinvented themselves as a boating company. So the reason I bring this up is, and you just alluded to it, the individual investor that's in this market now, do you think they'll learn to have just a little bit more patience? Because I think their instincts are right. I think their research is right. Just let these things work out. Sometimes it could take a year or two. Yeah, you gotta have a, what do they call them diamond hands. I had I had paper I still <laughs> hand up, Charles. I had paper hands with uh, AMC. I had costs. I didn't know what was going on. And, and as crazy as people think I am, it, it, if I don't understand what's going on I, and things are so volatile, I got paper hands. The Bitcoin people, I can't go anywhere down the street without Bitcoin. The crypto people chirping me because I sold it at eleven thousand. So. You got, but you got to invest in what you believe in and people you believe in, and that's what I do. So uh, you can't be scared off. You got to believe in your heart. I have losers that I hold because I believe in it, and I have winners that I keep right. holding because I believe in it. But you got to trust your gut. There's, there's this general image, and Wall Street loves doing it. The suits love doing it. That's what I call them the suits. 
hey, we're smarter than you. You're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Trust us. That's garbage. They just want your fees. So trust, if you do the research and you do trust your gut, stick with it. Don't believe, don't let them scare you away. They probably want to drive right. the price down so they can buy more of it themselves. You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Dave. Uh, in 1841, there was a book published called Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. That's where everyone became aware of the tulip craze, which is obviously famous to this day. Over the weekend, I bought a book called Delusions of the Crowd by William Bernstein. And so far, I absolutely hate the book. But I believe that there's wisdom in the crowds. And that's why I love this ETF. We've got a real life chance now to prove Wall Street elites wrong, that, that the wisdom of the crowds ultimately can supersede the, the high and mighty on these pedestals. Just your final thoughts on this being the ultimate chance now for people to see that you don't necessarily have to fork over your money to someone who may not know more than you do. Yeah, and I, I honestly think that, you know, the old school, the old guard, and it's not just in this industry, they're fighting the tides. The internet, you got to adapt or die. I keep saying that. The internet has proven that you can, you know, aggregate information and get very good information from it. So using, you know, artificial intelligence and algorithms and science and all this stuff, every industry is doing it. It's only natural that it's going to come to Wall Street. So uh, I'm looking forward to see the results. Again, you got to wait over the long haul. I got involved because this thing's been around for five years. They invented the algorithm too soon. They were an idea before their time. Right. But over the last year, everything's right. picked up. And the, the beauty of this game, Stuart, I mean, Stuart, Charles, this, this, I'm going, all my shows confused. The, the beauty of this game, Charles, <laughs> there's a scoreboard. There is a scoreboard. So we'll be able to right. tell who won and right. who lost and who was smart and who wasn't in a year, two years down the road. All right, Dave, I'm going to thank you for two things. First, coming on the show. Second, not wearing a suit. My man, congratulations, folks. We'll be right back.